Hey guys, Ian here, head coach at Legacy Endurance, and this week I want to talk to you about anaerobic threshold, or perhaps you've heard it referred to as lactate threshold. Same thing. So basically I want to explain to you what's going on in the body and actually how do we train to improve your threshold. So as we exercise, as we start to exert ourselves, use our muscles and start to move, our body produces a byproduct called lactic acid. So in Lower intensity workouts, for example, when we're running at a controlled, easy pace, there's plenty of oxygen in our body. The oxygen is what helps to clear out that lactic acid. As you start to increase the intensity though, of your workout and you start to pedal quicker, run faster, exert yourself more, the amount of lactic acid starts to pool up in your body because your the oxygen is being deployed into other areas of your body, your muscles, to help to deal with all that extra energy that's being spent. So what happens is is that we, we start to pool up this lactic acid. So if I was to demonstrate that on this chart, we have our lactic acid on the left side here and the intensity on the bottom. So that might be expressed as, say, pace. That might be expressed as our heart rate. We can measure it both ways. Um, but the for the average person, your threshold ends up hitting somewhere between, say, a 10K and a half marathon effort, somewhere in between there. Generally, your threshold for most people on average, as a rule of thumb, would be somewhere in at a pace or in a you know intensity level that you could hold for an hour. So what's happening is, is as you start out running at lower intensities, the body's able to deal with that lactic acid. You're producing the lactic acid, but your body's able to flush it out quite quickly. As you start to ramp up the intensity, it starts to pool up and eventually it just starts to shoot up. And that point where you flip over, where your body can no longer keep up with the amount of lactic acid that's being produced is what we call our anaerobic threshold. So it's important to know that because as soon as you flip over that and you move from say training your aerobic system, you start working into an aerobic anaerobic system and ultimately that's not something you can maintain for too long. So eventually that that amount of sort of buildup of that lactic acid will force you to stop. I'm sure you felt that as a runner. So the good news is we can actually train our body to enhance and improve our threshold and I'll show you what that looks like and the types of runs we would use to start to build out your threshold. Okay, so how do we train our threshold? Well, we have to spend time at that intensity in order for it to develop. So whenever we want to sort of adapt or make a change or improve something in our body, we need to stress that. So we need to spend time at the threshold. So I'll demonstrate that here using um, this chart again. And what I'll show you is sort of, if we look at this from a, using a heart rate as our guide for the intensity of the workout, um, on this side we've got our heart rate. So say for example, your resting heart rate is 50 beats per minute and your maximum heart rate is 190 beats per minute. For example, if you're gonna go out and run at a easy pace workout, that would be somewhere in that 65 to 75% of your max um, where you would spend time going out for an easy run. We're building our aerobic capacity there. There's ample oxygen in your body. You're clearing out the lactate in that type of a workout. So in order for us to get threshold development, we wanna spend time right at that threshold. So as I mentioned before, for the average person, that might be the pace or the heart rate you're gonna be at for about an hour. So that might be somewhere between a 10K intensity and a half marathon intensity. And so for this, this example, we'll say, maybe it's in that 85 to 90% of your maximum heart rate is where your threshold would sit. So we wanna spend time training at that threshold. And so what we what would make, maybe wanna look at is you've probably heard a, of a tempo run before where that's sort of in that same sort of pace. Generally that's what we would refer to in a tempo run. So the benefit of that is you'd be training at that threshold for say 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes and staying at that threshold to get that adaptation and to really stress that system and stress that threshold. So that's one way we would help you get to that, building up that threshold. Or you might look at it from like an interval, doing repeats at that intensity as well. So a classic workout might be mile repeats where you, you get up to that intensity, you take a break, you do another interval, take a break, and another interval, and so on. And so you might have multiple um, times. And so ultimately what we're doing is we're spending as much time as possible. You might spend, say, six minutes running and three minutes in a rest, and then six more minutes, or eight and four, whatever that might be. You, you're resting for half as long as you're running, so you're spending as much time possible at that threshold level. So 
couple different ways and there's multiple different workouts that you can use to build your threshold and so that's not a workout you'd be doing every single day of the week but maybe once every seven to ten days you're intentionally training that threshold to get that development so if you're starting off if you're someone that's maybe lower level of fitness your your threshold might be a little bit lower than say someone that's been running for a long time so it's definitely something we can improve and develop with the right program so if you have any questions please let us know we'd be happy to answer them we build custom built running programs that are really designed for everyone so wherever you are in the spectrum we can help you sort of improve and so we'd love to help you out check us out online at legacyendurance.com and we'll see you on the next video